trying to record, Yumi. Feeling a little better now? Now they're being held? All right, everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far, because now Biblical Gender Rules is going to be telling us why you should be faking your orgasms. So a couple of real quick things before we get into the video. If you guys have not joined my Discord already, we recently went through a redesign process on it. So if that is something that you are into, if you want to connect with other fans of the channel, then go ahead and go to the link in the description down below. It'll take you to Discord. Now, if you'd like another place to hang out with the community and also to talk to me directly, then I've actually been doing a lot of live streams over on Twitch. So there's a link to that in the description below. If you follow over there, you'll be able to see whenever I go live, though usually it's about 3 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday or at least that's when it's supposed to be as soon as I get my sleep schedule back on track. Again. Again. But with all that said, enough stalling. Let's go ahead and get into the fan art section. But you also use the fan art section to stall. Shut up, real Surus. So first of all, we have an Elfin Surus by the Three-Eyed Cat. And then we have an Uwu Surus by the Dragon Lord 2006. Followed by a Rule 63 Surus and Raz by Baphomet. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. And let's go ahead and get into BGR. I'm ready to begin my daily migraine. Should I fake having sexual pleasure with my husband? This is a question a lot of Christian wives ask. Some may frame the question in a way that seems to force an answer. They might say, isn't faking it a form of lying and God never wants us to lie, right? This is like asking a man, when did you stop beating your wife? It presupposes something to be true. Well, you can feel the sexual tension in the room. Is wrong for a Christian? I remember reading a book many years ago by Josh McDowell and Norm Geisler called Love is Always Right. These two men were some of my favorite authors growing up because they were not afraid to tackle the tough questions. In that book, they tackled the issue of his lying wrong in God's eyes, and the conclusion they came to based on scriptures is, no, I don't have the book anymore so I'm going somewhat on memory here. The basic gist of their argument is that if an untruth being told is to cover sin, yours or someone else's, or cause harm like false witness, then it is a sin in God's eyes. However, if the lie being told is to protect innocent life, or promote or protect righteous acts, then it is not sin. Lying is not always wrong in God's eyes, in the same way that killing is not always wrong. If a person is killed because of a just punishment by the state, or a soldier is killed in battle, or someone is killed as an act of self-defense, there is no sin in it. But if we kill someone out of selfishness or hate, or for other sinful reasons, then it becomes murder, and therefore the killing in that instance is a sin. Isn't it funny how the first thing BGR goes to is whether or not a lie is a righteous lie? As if he's going to try to say that it's okay for the wife to lie in this instance because of reason X, Y, or Z. I mean, it's a surprising amount of nuance for a BGR article, but I am kind of worried that there's going to be some tacit admission here that the wife should be lying in order to preserve the husband's ego instead of having a, a healthy sex life? That is at least the angle I'm expecting, given that it's BGR. Which then grants the question, does BGR even sexually satisfy his wife? Is he comfortable living the lie that he actually is good in bed? Questions for later, hopefully with no answers. So if lying is not always wrong, should a woman fake it with her husband? The answer is yes. M it's really yes most of the time. <laughs> Can you imagine having the conversation with your significant other? Hey, Lucy, I have a question. Um, so the next time we boink, could you like fake it for me? What, do you mean kind of like role play? Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it's uh, in order to help my insecurities. I'm literally made of them. Okay, so what do you need me to do? Well, you see, I need you to fake having an orgasm because I honestly don't know how to give you one. So wait, you mean you get to have a real orgasm, but I've got to fake it? Look, I really need you to do this for me. I'd say you're asking her to take one for the team, but more accurately, I think she's just going to take her shit and leave after a while. When not to fake it with your husband when the pain is abnormal. What I mean by that is I have heard from many Christian women on the subject that deal with chronic pain, whether it is in the vaginal area or someone else. Sometimes you may have big flare-ups or some unusual pain that you have never felt before. In this case, you need to let your husband know, and if he, being loving, will understand. 
But if you experience regular and chronic pain, you may need to sacrifice some comfort for this short period when sex occurs to meet the needs of your husband and your marriage. Some women actually get short reprieve from their chronic pain if they receive an orgasm. Aw, look, isn't he being sweet telling you that while you're subjugating yourself to your husband and basically being a sex slave, even if you're in chronic pain and shouldn't actually be having sex because it's hurting you, don't fake the orgasm that your husband is definitely giving you. At least he thinks that. Don't fake it if he is being rough. There may be some times when a husband has rough sex with his wife in an effort to display his dominion over her, to show her that she was made for him, not him for her, to remind her that she is to submit to him in everything. And yes, I'm providing biblical context because this book is definitely not used as an apologetic and sexual abuse. This is to show her that sex is not all about her comfort and her wishes, but rather that God made her for her husband's sexual use and satisfaction. Ah, I see. I really like the subtle cell phone there that, uh, you weren't made to pleasure your wife. That's a real funny way of saying you don't know how to pleasure a woman. Is that what happened to your last marriage? Is that why it happened? Because I've been thinking it was abuse, but maybe it's just that you're inept. I feel really bad sexually shaming someone, but this is the guy that said that we should be able to wed 12 and 13 year old girls. So actually, I don't feel bad about making fun of his sexual ineptitude. Also, while I recognize that many people in the BDSM community will be able to see the benefits of a subdom relationship here, this isn't necessarily that. This is the guy basically saying that he's biologically superior to the woman and therefore should have dominion over her, as if she's a possession. Not in a kinky way. I'd say it's underwhelming, but then you wouldn't know if I'm talking about the idea or his penis. Trick question, we're talking about my penis. That, that one's underwhelming. When to fake it. Every time you have sex and are not genuinely feeling sexual pleasure from your husband, and it is not for the two reasons I mentioned above, you should totally fake it. I'm gonna go ahead and offer a rebuttal. If you wanna have a healthy sexual relationship, if you are not actually getting pleasured by your partner, then that means you need to communicate with your partner that they aren't satisfying you. Because it could be for a couple reasons. One, if you happen to be in a conservative Christian relationship and have only ever known the opposite sex, you might not realize that the reason your husband isn't getting you off is because you might not be sexually attracted to him. On the flip side of this, if you find out that your orientation is actually straight, there is another problem here. If you are still not being able to receive any type of pleasure from your partner, then why is it okay for your partner to be receiving pleasure from you? I know that the reason that BGR gives here is because the woman was made for the man, not the man made for the woman. And while yes, at this point of the video, it would be incredibly unoriginal for me to keep on making fun of his uh, inadequacies in bed, I honestly think it's not that bad, because at the end of the day, he's not being original either. He's pulling all of his misogyny out of a 2,000-year-old book. But really, based on everything we've read so far, can you imagine being the ex-wife of biblical gender roles? Just finding out several years later that somebody could actually make you orgasm, that you might actually be able to experience sexual pleasure. Can you just imagine being that person who happens to be with someone who is so inept that he has to create an entire blog website explaining away the fact that he blows dick in bed, except not really, because then that would be gay and that would be against his religion. So you've got two options here if you're biblical gender roles. You can either learn how to actually pleasure a female, or you can find whatever random ass verse you need to in this book to explain away the fact that you can't fuck. The key to you enjoying sex with your husband is literally and figuratively in your own hands. So if you figure out how your body works and gently find ways to guide your husband in a way that does not seem to be correcting him, but lovingly and softly showing him what you need and you won't have to fake it very often because you will actually be enjoying sex with him. In fact, you may enjoy it so much you may start looking forward to it and initiating sex with him more. You know, I would say that there's some legitimately good advice here, but there's a flip side to it. Given that women aren't actually encouraged to explore their own bodies and learn the things that actually make them sexually pleasured, the only time she'll get to experience any of this is during sex with the husband. If you can only experience sexual pleasure during sex with your husband, and your husband is not pleasuring you, 
at what point are you going to actually learn that thing that you like or that thing that needs to be done for you to experience pleasure? Especially if in the bedroom, you're not being encouraged to experiment, you're being encouraged to submit. But why should I have to fake it? Many Christian wives ask, if I give him sex, that should be good enough. I should not have to give him sex and also pretend to like it. That is ridiculous. Do we think it's ridiculous when a retail person puts on a fake smile and fakes enthusiasm to sell their products to customers even if they're having a really bad day? Of course not. There are many times in life when we just have to put on a smile, put our best effort forward even when we don't feel like it, and sex with our spouse is no exception to that rule. Why is it that I have the image now, an absolutely terrible image, of BGR trying to be the dominating male, but when he grabs the hair of his wife, instead of saying, take it, he just ends up saying, fake it. Also, there are some key differences between the wife and the retail employee here. For one, I think it's ridiculous that a retail employee should have to fake their smiles at all times. I hated faking my smiles, and I still don't think I should have had to in the first place. And the main reason is, they weren't being paid enough to fake their smiles. I wasn't being paid enough to fake my smiles. Minimum wage is not enough to fake a fucking smile for every single person who comes in wanting to ruin your day. But that's not the only problem. There's another issue here. The difference between a wife and a retail worker is that a wife's not getting paid. If the wife was getting paid to have sex with her husband, I'm sure BGR would have some issues with that as I'm pretty sure he's against sex work. But not against child marriages. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Really tells you where his priorities are. So what have we learned in this video? Because what I learned is that BGR is so horrible in bed he had to make an entire website filled with apologetics for why he can't satisfy his wife. And as funny as that is, it's also really sad. Not only is it sad for whoever he happens to be in a relationship with for however long this one ends up lasting, it's also sad for the dozens, I don't know exactly how much influence he has, of people who frequent his blog and are searching for actual relationship advice that they think is really going to help them. Like, I'm fairly certain that Bible-believing 16 and 18-year-old me might have actually looked at some of this information and said that it looked pretty sound. I don't know. I don't have a time machine. I can't ask conservative Cirrus what he thought, but I can at least reflect and think that some of this sounded reasonable to a younger version of myself that thought that being in a relationship meant that I had some ownership over another person's body. But I have some advice for BGR should he stumble on any of my content. You see, if you're not able to pleasure your wife, it might be because you guys are not using the correct toys. And if you're not, there's actually a pretty easy way for you to get some. Hell, if you actually need to pleasure your wife and you don't want to end up like Ben Shapiro with a doctor wife trying to explain why she's never actually wet, then try going to ddlgplayground.com and using the coupon code SERIOUS in order to get 10% off of anything you get there. And if you don't want to pleasure yourself, then fine. If you don't like me, then you can get something there to go fuck yourself too. That works as well. But with all that said, I think the biggest conclusion we can get to is that even though it's sad that there are some people who are going to take the advice of BGR, don't take the advice of random strangers on the internet when it comes to whether or not you should be a sexually inept male. Talk with your partner and be equals in the bedroom. Learn how to pleasure each other. It is not just the wife's job to pleasure her husband. Now, granted, there is a giant asterisk here where kinks are concerned, so, you know, whatever floats your boat. But for all of you guys, I already have an affiliate link in the description for you anyway. For everyone else, just don't take really bad relationship advice from biblical gender roles. Here's probably a really good litmus test. If the guy thinks child marriages are okay, then maybe his advice on marriage for everything else is pretty shit. But with all that out of the way, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification icon if you haven't already. If you've already done that though, thank you for being part of this channel and allowing it to grow. It is greatly appreciated. And if you're at this stage of the video, then Y'all know what this is. These are the Patreon slides. If you are a patron of over $20 and higher, then you get to be in this section. But all of my patrons get to be in the credit section because all of you contribute to these videos being able to come out. If you become a patron, then you get to see episodes as soon as they are produced as opposed to whenever they are released. And every now and again, you also get access to special behind the scenes episodes as well. Once again, thank you all for everything you do in helping this channel grow. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.